This is a project I've been working on for a while. Um, it's a welder, a stick welder, and um, it was constructed using two microwave oven transformers, uh, first one and second one here. And uh, I removed the secondary coils, kept the primaries, which are these ones, um, and rewound the secondaries with 20, 25 turns or so of um, 10 gauge solid copper wire. Uh, power cords, each transformer has a separate power cord and of course the cores are grounded. So the primaries are wired in parallel. Of course they have to be in phase or the, um, the peaks and troughs of the, of the two outputs will cancel each other out. Uh, so you just have to sort of switch the, the leads around until that works. Um, and then the secondaries are wired in series, so the voltages add. Then we've got out of this side, this pair of lugs, you know, screwed down here. There's a cable, actually a cable, a jumper cable, uh, and this is my ground clamp. And on the other side, you know, you, you go through here, through that coil, through back through here through this coil and then through this set of lugs here and this is my um, my stinger, the uh, electrode holder if you like. Um, so one end goes to, to ground and the other end goes to um, the electrode. Uh, thus far I've tested its uh, voltage output, I haven't actually tried welding with it. Um, so one transformer puts out about 23 volts, the other one puts out about 28, and wired properly in phase, um, it adds to 51 or so volts, which is nice. Um, that should make it fairly easy to start an arc. With it. You know, if you have a, a somewhat lower open circuit voltage, it's harder to actually get the arc to jump the gap. Um, and the way I'm dealing with uh, power control is essentially by um, routing each of these, the power cords, through a power strip in which is attached a, a 15 amp circuit breaker. And the, most of the circuits in my house are 20 amp, so this keeps them safe. Um, each one is obviously on a separate 20 amp circuit. And so if the welder starts drawing too much current, you know, it goes into whatever thermal runaway or something, then um, this will just pop off and uh, the house circuits will be 1 16th inch 6013 welding rods from Harbor Freight. They were nice and cheap. And uh, these also act as a form of amperage control because, current control I should say, because they're so thin, you know, um, and they're steel and as such they have some resistance so they will uh, control the current, they'll heat up a little bit obviously but then you do want the welding rod to be fairly hot. Um, so the first time I tried building this uh, I actually wound the coils out of 8 gauge uh, copper wire, stranded copper wire which apart from being a pain to work with was so thick that I couldn't fit 18 turns comfortably in here and, and be able to get the this e, uh, I section, the E section, perfectly closed up like that. Um, so what I ended up doing, and this is a little bit silly, is I thought, you know what, those magnetic shunts that come out of the transformers, when you take them apart, uh, these things, you know, they look like that, they're sort of layered pieces of metal. They're used as a form of amperage control. I thought, you know what, I'll just stack a couple of those inside there and it'll close the gap. And for some reason, it actually drew more current with those things there, and of course it was less efficient, so I was only getting about, I don't know, 13 volts out of, this was one of the original coils, that was the other one, uh, for 13 and 11. So that wouldn't have given me, you know, nearly enough voltage to actually get an arc started uh, and, and comfortably maintain it. Um, and of course it was popping those 15 amp circuit breakers 
so that didn't pan out, and so I rewound the coils, and that became that was that ended up being much neater. You know, I got these two sections back together, epoxied them, and clamped them very, very hard in a vise, and they closed up, and now they're all good. And uh, so I set this up, and they're you know pretty neat. Um, one one thing I made sure to do was I took the the ground wire coming out of these microwave oven uh, transformer uh, power cords, and I just sort of screwed it in to um, one of the holes in the transformer core. There were a bunch of them, and I just sort of drilled out one and then forced a screw in, and I did the same here with a slightly different hole. Uh, and then the whole thing is mounted on a wooden base. This one, I used uh, some, some screws, just sort of drove them in like that. Uh, on each side around there to sort of keep it in. And this one, the base plate was still attached, so I used that. That was kind of convenient. And then, obviously, there's just some, some some sort of copper pipe clamps holding these things down so they don't wiggle around, you know, strain relief, if you like. Um, strain relief for these ones is really just the ground wire because that's actually screwed in. So, yeah, oh, and the other thing is uh, this fan which came out of one of the microwaves, um, I wired it up, you know, and uh, that should provide some cooling, because what I discovered when, you know, just having it on, I tested it for two minutes and thought, you know what, well, maybe I'll run it on a 20% duty cycle. It didn't quite pan out. Um, the coil in this particular transformer, it heated up a fair amount, but the coil in this transformer heated up a great deal more which is odd because the voltage I get out of this one is about 28 and this one is 23 so you'd think that there would be more current flowing through this coil but you know what maybe the uh, maybe this is actually an aluminum uh, coil and it's it's um, not copper inside it's just got a sort of coppery colored coating so maybe the resistance is higher maybe the core is less efficient somehow I'm not entirely sure what's going on but uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, for further plans, I'm hoping later today to test the welder. Um, you know, to actually try welding with it. And I want to try and introduce a choke uh, into the the circuit to limit the amperage because of course, and I'm not, I, I still have to do a little bit of research, but um, a choke, which is an, essentially is an inductor, uh, acts somewhat like a resistor to an AC circuit. Um, you know, it, it sort of, it, it, it acts on the circuit in a similar way as a, just a bog standard resistor acts on DC. And so the idea is that if you put an inductor in series, with the secondary coils, it will limit the amperage. And now I'm not entirely sure if this is necessary, um, but it would be nice just to to know that you know. It hopefully, it won't heat up these too much. I'll be able. I'll have some way of controlling the amperage, um, and just for safety, I'll probably be running it on a 10% duty cycle or thereabouts. Uh, so there's that. Um, of course, some math will be necessary to sort of figure out what the inductance of the inductor should be, but you know what, math's not a problem, math is fun. Um, so, let's see if we can get just a sort of wider shot. There's the, the hole welder and, you know, um, not on right now, obviously, that's just charging something else. Um, so yeah, there you go. My arc is too too long. We're putting it up. Okay. Now that's success. Off both. Off both. Let me disconnect.